Hello Abnormal Investigations family, good to see you guys. I wanted to let you all know on our other channel, AI Seeking the Truth, Sarah will be dropping her first video record. Also, so you're going to have Sarah and Kaylee also helping on that channel, which will be narrating encounters. Go over, check them out, subscribe, and uh, show them a little love. And I've got a great encounter tonight, guys. I actually have an encounter from somebody that must live fairly close to me as they fish and hunt the same lake as I do. And they had a pretty bad encounter, and I was lucky enough. Well, I'll tell you at the end how I'm lucky, because uh, I think this is going to be well worth it. So we'll go ahead and get into this encounter, guys. I'll never forget my fishing trip to Ulagal Lake last night. I live close to the lake also, Mike. Probably not far from you as I fish the north end also. As the sun set and the stars began to twinkle, I noticed something massive moving beneath the surface of the water. My instinct screamed, giant catfish. Despite a slow start, I began reeling in some nice, pan-sized fish. But the real show was about to begin. The large fish I had seen earlier started swimming around my boat, teasing me with its presence. I was frozen and all, barely breathing, trying not to scare it away. I decided to try something different, hoping to lure the beast in. I baited my hook with chicken, and I cast my line back into the water. The suspense was suffocating. And then it happened. The water erupted in a frenzy, a splashing and churning like a very large fish was thrashing about. Waves crashed against the shore and my heart raced with excitement. I knew I had to be ready. This was my chance to land a monster, a lake monster. I tossed my line over where the commotion was happening and then, bam! It hit the line with incredible force, almost yanking the rod out of my hands. I held tight, my muscles straining against the pull. This was it. I had hooked the monster. But then my line fell slack. The tension was gone, and I was left wondering what had just happened. I thought maybe I had lost a fish, but then it happened again and again and again. And it was like the fish was playing a game with me, biting and then releasing the line. I was baffled how this was happening. I even changed circle hooks to make sure I even had a sharp one on. And then the weirdest thing happened. Something soft and wet hit me in the face. I rubbed my face, trying to process what had just occurred. And I felt a sticky, gooey substance all over my skin. I looked down at my hands and my heart skipped a beat. It was chicken liver. The same bait I was using? What the hell? It was then that I realized the monster had not only been playing with my line, but had also been spitting my own bait back at me. I was both amazed and terrified by this creature's intelligence and cunning. This was no ordinary fish, and I was in for the fight of my life, I guess. I tried to compose myself and think of the next move. I carefully placed my lantern on the edge of the water, hoping to dry off the chicken liver bait and maybe even lure the monster closer. The light flickered against the casting an eerie shadow on the surrounding trees and across the water. All of a sudden, all the shad started jumping. As I waited, the water around the lantern began to ripple and churn. I could feel the tension building again. Suddenly, the lantern started to slide across the water as if something was pulling it toward the depths of the lake. My heart was racing. My boat tilted. I grabbed the lantern and held on tight. The force on the other end was incredible. But I refused to let go. I was determined to see this through, no matter what, or until my line broke. And then I saw it, a massive, shadowy form materialized beneath the water, its eyes glowing like the green orbs in the darkness. I was face to face with the monster, and my life would never be the same. The creature's head was like nothing I'd ever seen before. It had the sleek, smooth skin of a frog, but also unmistakable features of a human face. The eyes, nose, and mouth were all humanoid but they were distorted as if they had been stretched and contorted to fit a frog-like skull. As the creature swam closer, I saw that its hands were equally bizarre. They resembled turtle paws, complete with the sharp nails and scaly skin. 
but they were also eerily human-like with fingers that seemed to be webbed together. It then dove deeper under the murky water. I got very light-headed, and I must have passed out because as the creature's words faded away, everything went black. I collapsed to the ground, my mind reeling with horror of what had just happened. When I came to, I was lying in my boat, thinking that I really hear the creature gurgling and trying to talk, or was it because I passed out? Drifting in the middle of the lake, the sun was rising and the water was calm and peaceful. Once again, it was as if the whole encounter had been just a dream, but damn, my head was messed up. I had a knot on my head, and I looked, and it wasn't even the sun coming up was just the moon I was sick to my stomach I knew that I'd hit my head fairly hard because there was also blood on my shirt I was ready to get out of there as fast as I could I reached for my trolling motor to turn it on anxious to put some distance between myself and the creature but I knew I had to be careful my little 10 foot boat wasn't built for speed and it was very dark I couldn't afford to go fast afraid that I would hit a stump or another log and turn over and well, now that I had a head injury and something under the water, I didn't want to be stranded out here. I did not want to end up in the water with this thing, the dark blackness of the water, and not knowing what was under me. I inched my way back to shore, my heart still racing with fear. I didn't dare look back, afraid of what I might see. Finally, I reached the boat ramp and breathed a sigh of relief. I knew now that I had to load my boat, so I backed my truck down the dark ramp and started to load my boat. The darkness seemed to press in around me, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. I seen bubbles under the water just out of my lights. Was this it? Was the creature following me, waiting for its chance to strike? My heart raced as quickly as I loaded my boat, my eyes scanning the water for any sign of movement. The bubbles seemed to be getting closer, and I knew I had to get out of there as fast as I could. I finally finished loading my boat and turned to leave, but as I did, I saw a shadowy form lurking just beneath the surface of the water. I am afraid as I was leaving, I seen something on two legs running along the lake parallel to me. I know that has to be it, but I kept on driving. I didn't dare look back, afraid of what I might see. I knew I had to get as far from the lake and from that creature as I possibly could. I sped down the road, my eyes fixed on the horizon. I didn't stop until I was back to the safety of my own home. Locked behind closed doors, only then did I allow myself to breathe a sigh of relief. I've fished this location for many years, and I'm older than you, Mike, I would say probably by 15 to 20 years. I've never had anything like this ever happen, and if anybody would have told me that, I would have been the first one to laugh. All I can tell you is I know what I've seen. And I know what happened. I've held this in a long time. But I've seen that you've came out and told a lot of stories. And I figured, well, if you can come out and tell what's happened to you, then surely I can me. I promise you, this really did happen. And I am going to pinpoint you on Google and show you exactly the ramp that I was at if you would like to investigate this area. I call this area Frog Ramp now. <laughs> That's a good name. And he, um, he did send me the location to my email, so I do know exactly where he was talking about. It's not far from actually where I'm at. Uh, I had one experience to where I dealt with something that was green. Um, it's back where we were fishing quite a bit. It would have been, I'm guessing, let me try to think, the summer of uh, 2023, I believe. And we were fishing almost every night. My mom... I'd walk back to my truck. We had all of our stuff, of course, in the back of my truck, and we had extra bait back there and stuff. And She walked a little ways from the lanterns and the fire we had back to the truck, which was probably 20, 30 feet. And she was standing there baiting her hook. Well, she hollered at me, and she said, Hey, Mike, come over here. I could tell by the way she told me to come here that it wasn't a normal come here. So I walked over there to the side of the truck, and still a little bit blinded by, you know, I was up by the lanterns and the fire my eyes were trying to adjust to the lower light then you know a little ways from those she told me to look at the forked tree 
I looked over at the fork in the tree and I noticed that there was something between the fork of the tree that was kind of oval shaped, kind of fat and round, you know. And I couldn't really quite make out what it was, but I could tell that it was green and it had like black dots on it or maybe moles or something like that. And the first thing I thought was it was a big bullfrog. And I told her, I said, that's a huge bullfrog. And she said, you better look again. So by this time, my brother-in-law had now walked up beside my mom. When I looked back over at it, I noticed that there's two yellow things. And these two yellow things are eyes because now I can see them blinking. This was actually a head. Now the head of whatever this thing was, was looking through the fork of this tree, which was over seven foot tall. It was looking right through the fork of the tree, watching us, blinking its eyes, nothing moving but its eyes. It had green skin with black dots or moles or something all over it, spots, I'm not sure what they were. And it was just standing there. My brother-in-law also got to witness this. Uh, we pretty much pretended like uh, we didn't see it. We didn't pay a lot of attention to it. And uh, me and my brother-in-law, we, of course, watched the creature as everybody else loaded our gear, and we just drove out of there with that incident. I think that when these things happen, if you have a chance to not engage them, especially if your family's with you, to just load your stuff and leave, I believe that's the best course of action. We've been to that place since then, and we've had absolutely no encounters but then we've also been there fishing where we've had encounters to where we even watch something walk out on like a uh, a part of the land that pokes out into the lake where my brother-in-law was actually fishing. And we watched something walk all the way out to where he was fishing, turn his lantern down, and took a part of his bait. We're presuming it took it to eat it. It was bipedal, it was tall, it was a shadowy figure because it was so far away, it was nighttime, and it was probably six, seven foot tall. So it wasn't afraid whatever this thing is to do that. Now this location is also the same location the other night when I was leaving that it screamed and laughed and we caught the words mama. This is also the same location the other night where the sticks were placed in the road and we were able to get the photographs that we've released on Patreon. So this is a pretty hot spot. It is also a pretty remote spot to where we go to down on the lake. Not a lot of people go, especially at night. So, uh... Yeah, I think if you're able to leave and not have to have confrontation with it, it's better to leave. But always keep your eye on it and be ready for whatever may happen. You know, always be prepared. I want to thank you guys for watching and supporting us, guys. I want to thank you for smashing that like button to help us get our algorithm out there. Our channel is really, really taken off, guys. Uh, share us out to your friends, your family. Get them to subscribe, watch, you know, like it. But we are, we're growing really big, and it's really nice, and we really enjoy you guys, and I look forward to Wednesday night at 8.30, you know, Central Time, when we get to spend time with you guys out under the open stars, who knows what's going to happen, but also we get to visit with you guys and uh, spend time with you guys, not necessarily just over subject matter, but take questions and answers, and I want to do more of those nights of just visiting with you guys to show, you know, our appreciation, but um, I hope to see you all Wednesday night. Like I said, we are going to be out on location, so there's a possibility something could happen. We're not going to be as deep as we usually are, but there's still that possibility. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, keep your head on a swivel, and don't be something's dinner. We'll see you on the next one, guys. God bless.